I'm an artist and a programmer. Chris Weiler, sound design, special effects. Good morning, my name is Donald Allen. I'm the project manager and a sound engine programmer. And this morning we're going to start by showing you our game trailer. as you saw from the trailer in the 2D game. I attempted to make a 3D version of that. This is the Rook. It is uh, based on the chess piece, the Rook. As you can see it's got ridges and uh, it looks like a very defensive castle type spaceship. 
This is the king ship. This would be the boss ship. It has, as uh, you can see, four cannons underneath the ship. And the heads-up display as we have, we have a health bar which will sit at the top of the screen in this area, and the crosshair which is in front of your ship, slightly above it. I will now pass it back to Donald for his uh, work on the sound engine. Okay, so in the sound engine, basically, this is a component of the project that allows all of the music to play on time and queue up when it needs to be. So it calls for updates of different methods, like they play method stop, you know, starting up, and it does various things that like adds tracks, like based on the level. So say you get to level one, it'll play the track automatically. If we go check out the next slide. I have a little code example I can show you. So like if you see at the top on the first line, add track. That kind of plays like when you're loading a CD, you'll see track one. And according to the code, the if statement, basically, if it sees that the opening tracks have been played equals zero, it automatically starts the level one track. But if it's already in the process of doing so, the else statement comes in and add after will go to like the following track or the end track. And then in the second one, string ID, that's like the, ti the title of the song. So it'll do basically the same thing as stated above. All right. For sounds, I'm an audiophile. Sound is a passion of mine. Uh, for all the sounds created, uh, I use a MIDI keyboard. And using Audacity, I was able to record them. And uh, I can make multiple sounds using just the one sound that I had recorded, uh, using different effects. Uh, you can add noise if you want to, add vibrations, reverbs, etc. So many of the sounds that are in the game are all created from just one sound using the MIDI keyboard. Um, for the voice acting, for the single player, it was done just using a microphone on a laptop and us poor voice actors. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, some of the sounds that we used were a wide array of lasers uh, for Amy and yourself, the player. Um, the engine when accelerating and decelerating. Uh, we got mechanical beeps for all the different menu options you know, when selecting. And then uh, shields, when powering up and down, we got separate sounds for those. All right, now I'll talk a little bit about the code used for this game. Uh, the core of it came from the R engine, which actually started out as a personal project of mine. I began it after we finished the midterm project to kind of make a 2D graphics engine for XNA, just to make it easier to use the API. And once we started senior projects, as a group, we kind of converted it to a 3D engine. And these are some of the classes that are included. And I'll show some code samples from all of these. Uh, so we have a basic object class that we use, so that every game object we create in the code will inherit from this. And it's got some basic properties like draw and update. So we can, this is for the uh, state machine. You can specify whether it's going to update or draw after we send it to the state machine. Uh, we also have a list of states that this object is part of. And at the bottom here, we have these abstract functions that need to be overridden in the uh, inherited classes. Here's a sample of how the state machine works. Um, so at the top here, we've got it's the update function. Um, so we first check to see if the game state needs to change. And if it does, we just simply change it. And then we have two lists of objects. One, the first one is for 2D objects, and the second is for the 3D ones. And we check to see if it's updatable first, and then we check the states that it's associated with, and we will update the objects accordingly. The reason that there are two different lists is because you have to tweak some graphic settings for 3D objects to get them to display properly with the 2D objects. Here is the Aspect Manager class, uh, just some highlights from that. We have the Screen X and Screen Y functions, which return just the height and width of your screen. Um, I did this because there wasn't really an easy way to access that from XNA. And you can actually, if you call this Configure function, it will automatically get the height and width of your monitor and will set the, uh, the window to that and make it full screen, so it can scale with any monitor size. 
once we have the aspect manager configured, we can then use the camera 3D. We really need just the two matrices from here, which are the projection and view matrix, because these are necessary to draw the 3D objects. <coughs> and here's a sample of the input manager I made, again, because I didn't like how the XNA API used their input functions. And with this, you can associate multiple keys and buttons to the same action. And at the bottom there is a sample from our menu class that implements this. We simply check to see if the action was down for select menu item. And if any of those keys were pressed, then this function will be called. I will have Guy explain the AI. On this slide, I uh, put some sample code of the chase method and the uh, evade method up. Up here at the top is uh, the two pieces of code that uh, the AI uses to find where the player is. And uh, after that, I didn't put the code up here. But after that, it, it, it'll turn the ship to face you, and then it'll face and focus at the range and start firing. Uh, the evade method, which is right there. Uh, is made for when a player, you as the player or one of your allies, gets too close to an enemy, and it will uh, it will run away from you after a time. Uh, first, the first line of code points it, points uh, the enemy directly away from the player. These next two then points it in a random direction, and it'll uh, run away at a very high speed <laughs> until the evade range, which I believe is 100. <coughs> Uh, they'll run away until it made range times until it equals made range times six. And uh, also in AI, we had the patrol method. We had two different patrol methods. One for the leader, which is uh, we just set three different three or four different points, and uh, the leader will go around and set points, turning to the point that it's going to. And the second part here is uh, basically just having every other ship that isn't the leader follow the, <coughs> follow the leader. <coughs> <coughs>